Wow, what a case. What a case. Let's break it down right now with trial attorney and judge. Judge Quinton Washington is joining us right now. Judge, great to have you here on Law and Crime. I got to ask you first off, have you ever seen a case quite like this one before? Not that's beyond anything that came out of like Patty Hearst or any of the kidnappings that came out of California about 10 years ago. This is. This is incredibly unique. This is incredibly unique. How is it possible that if this is all true, remember we're covering this trial, that he could have kept doing this on a continual basis? I mean, he had two bodies in his house, and then this third woman, if she didn't call 911, who knows what would have happened to her? How is it possible that he could have continued on this crime spree? Well, I mean, the difficulty is, is that what reason would police have to go in there? Because unless they're called, they don't know of anything, which is why once investigations start, that's when police find out things. But otherwise, they'd have no reason to know if he's coming in and going out and acting normal. Why would people ever call to come? Why would people ever be called to go in this house? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, look, we, we have the insight because we get all the information as we're covering the trial. As you reviewed the case, what did you see as a pattern here? Because there was seemed to be, you know, the victims were women. Um, they seemed to maybe be vulnerable. I'm curious from your perspective, what do you think he, again, this was allegedly, because we're, we're, we haven't told what the verdict is yet, what do you think that he saw as these victims here? What do you, what do you think he was looking for? I think many times when you have victims such as this, what happens is that the predators prey on certain characteristics such as meekness, such as not needed much involvement with the community or with the family. And so when they find them, they're able to remove, slowly remove them from society and no one really notices. And so then you have, when no one really notices, there's nobody for them to really reach out to and the cycle just continues. And so I think that's what happened here until Jane Doe called out. Yeah, and manipulating their interests in terms of religion. We're going to learn a lot more about this, particularly when the victim testifies. But when we come back from our short break, you're going to hear from officers who went into that house and found those bodies. We'll be right back. Wow. Can't even imagine what it's like to be the officers walking to that house and seeing those decomposed bodies and collecting evidence. Um, Judge, my question to you is, and, you know, the case against them is, Pretty strong. How do you defend Sean Great? Well, I think there are a couple of things you can do. One is that you can say that there's some level of voluntariness by the woman who is Jane Doe. That doesn't take away from the two that were allegedly deceased because of his actions. The other thing you can do is you can hope to find somebody else to point the finger at and say, this is somebody that was, these are people who were in the house who were deceased who my client did not have anything to do with. Or you could say that there's some mental health issue there that means that he should not be held liable and uh, criminal standard for what he's done. All right, let's, let's break some of that down. So the idea that she was, you know, consented, it's going to be hard to convince a jury that a woman would consent to be in a house with decomposed bodies um, and she disappeared and no one knew what happened to her, right? That's a tough argument. Oh, incredibly so, incredibly so. But the issue is, is that, you know, the U.S. has very strong fundamental property rights. And so what goes on in people's houses and what goes on on people's property is something that they have a strong say-so with. And so you never can tell what people may be into. It sounds like a stretch, but at the same time, you never can tell what people may be into. And the idea of insanity, did he not fully understand what he was doing? I mean, he seemed to have... Uh, a disarming quality to him. He see, as we talked about earlier, he knew what he was doing by manipulating these women, or allegedly manipulating these women, and getting him. Um, so, it, how could it be argued that he may he may he want to plead the insanity defense? Oh, you'd have to have a, you'd have to have a third party come in and give a test on that. Then there'd have to be competency that would be a, that a third party you'd be able to hang your hat on that. And until they get that, then it's not possible. And I'm just in looking at different ways you could try to defend. One of them could be an insanity. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. We're not at the end of that, though. We still have to talk more about this case. Uh